The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803 0930. Toll free at 1 800 616 9236. And cell calls are free at Star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes. We want to make sure you don't do it wrong, especially you do it yourselfers. We just want to make sure you understand more about your taxes than most people. And that's what, that's what our uh, whole goal of doing this program is all about. We want to help you. And I, I got my buddy in studio, Chris Fabian. Hey, Chris. Hello, Esther. Hello, Christopher. Okay, and all we got all of our offices open, right? We do. Nine, nine to five tonight, nine to nine Monday through Friday. Um, and if you need the best help for the least amount of, of fees, EG Tax is where we hope you'll stop. But in the meantime, if you have tax questions, you can go to our website at egtax.com, ask the tax lady, and I'll be happy to respond right away. Yep, right? yep, yep. You know, and you, you said, you know, do it yourself and... Uh, when I got interviewed by Channel 2 this week, her first question was, so what do you think of the free software? <laughs> right. And I'm well, like... Well, you know what? That's a perfect lead-in to t- tell what happened with uh, a client of ours that came back after a few years. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, thought they could do it themselves, has done it. I'm doing the return. And I said, what's this self-employment? She goes, Well, that's my rental property. I said, but you have your Schedule E. She goes, yeah, but then the income is my self-employment. I said, no, it's not. So she's been taxing herself. She's been paying an extra $3,000 a year in taxes. For how many years? For three years, at least. That's why I told her to bring in to me. So, I mean, it's... So so the thing is, when you don't know what you're doing... That is a dangerous thing. It's like giving a kid a handgun, I'll tell you. And yep. so this lady overpaid her taxes by $900 so that she didn't have to pay $300 in th- over, th- uh, well, maybe $150 a year, for $450. So she overpaid by 9000 to save 450 And that yep. happens all the time because when you're a do-it-yourselfer, you don't know if it's right. That's right. That's right. And I mean, it can be mathematically correct. I love watching these commercials that say, we guarantee the, that your return will be mathematically correct. Well, we guarantee that too. That's right. But that's... if you put something in incorrectly or you didn't interpret it correctly or you missed a credit, it's still at mathematically correct. It's just incorrect from a theory standpoint. Right, right. And, you know, what about how many clients do you know that have been single this year that you had to say your refund this year is twenty dollars right. where right. they're used because, to getting back a thousand dollars right and that's the other thing that we do is and i hate to make this sound like a commercial i know i, I know this. but but here's the other thing we do is we tell you this is where you're headed this is how to fix it yep. you know i yep. mean that in itself and plus we guarantee our work right and that's... if we make a mistake we pay the penalty and in interest exactly right yep. okay I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. I'm sorry for doing that, but it makes me crazy to think that so many times you see people that did it themselves, they did it wrong. Yeah. You know, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. We, you can text us at 716-8030. And we have Gary, who's been waiting patiently. Hi, Gary. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I have a question. Uh I had a, de- a good deal on uh, rental, uh, renting a condo. So I, I, I did June to June. I'm in this weekend uh, back home for a wedding. And uh, I didn't intend on working, but I ended up making about, you know, 3000 I, I was working at uh, Home Depot. I was, like, working at Home Depot for a so anyway, the federal was pretty clear, just a few entries. I got very simple. But on the state, you got to put that. Uh, do I owe state tax? I mean, there's no state tax in Florida, right? Right. So, but okay. So here's the thing: Where are you a resident of? Well, I own. Where Where uh, is it? it? Where's your driver's license? My driver's license is in New York State. Where's your house at? In Tonawanda. Okay. So 
if you have a closer relationship to New York State than to Florida, then the income earned is going to be taxable to New York State. But whether you are a New York resident or not, if you earned it in New York, you're going to have to pay New York State taxes on everything else. So, I mean, so if you're a New York resident, you pay tax on everything, all right? Less your right. Social Security and your, your pensions. But if even if you were a Florida resident, if you worked in New York State, you still have to pay non-resident New York State taxes. New York does not let you go. Correct, correct. But my question is, I'm looking at extending and staying longer in 2024. So I, I told him I'm going to I'm going to work more hours, okay? But I don't want to get in, you know. I mean, I will will be probably in 24 living more months in Florida than New York. Okay, okay? but how, what you're probably going to do is going to be mitigated by the fact by by what you really what your real intent is. So as long as you still have a house here and you're working here and you keep and, the, your your I'm star, not, no, and no, I'm not I'm not working in New York at all. Well, where where do you work at at um, at the no, I just Lowe's or? No, no, I'm retired, and then I just picked up. But don't a job didn't you just at, say uh, you were working a job? In Florida, I picked up. Oh, you my, work in Florida. Yeah, the only W twos I got were the. Okay, uh, so but but you still Florida. are a New York resident, so you're going to have to pay taxes for income earned in Florida as a New York resident. Well, if I work in Florida, and this year I, I I'm there like. 10 or 11 months. Yep, but Gary, you okay. have to you have to change your voter's registration, your driver's, your driver's license. license. You have to insurance. give up your star exemption up here. Right. You have to change get a doctor down there. You have to change everything, everything. to be considered a Florida be- resident. In order in to York. have New York release you, you have to prove you have a closer relationship to Florida than New York state. So if I owned, if I owned a house in Florida and I owned a house in New York, you can't be a resident of two states. No, I know. You have to pick one. And and you pick it by where you vote, where your registration is, where your time is spent, what has, you know, where your children are. All of these things, if you get audited, you have to prove you have a closer relationship to Florida than to New York. And days spent. So this 3000 I have to pay state tax on rolled into my uh right but the thing is your standard deduction is going to be higher than you're not going to pay taxes anyway. well in new york what what is how much is your pension my pension and my social security come out to be about 45 and then my distributions come out to be another 45 so it's like okay but but assuming that he's a florida resident if all he had was, it, but I don't know if that he really is a Florida resident. Um, but yeah. if all he, if he were a Florida resident, if all he, if all he had was income earned in New York, that's all he would pay taxes on. But if in fact he's still a New York State resident, which it sounds like he is, then he's going to have to pay taxes on all income, even income earned in Florida. Right. Yeah. Uh- so I'll, I, yeah, because they ask your federal amount. I mean, you have to move on it. You have to move on it, Gary, to show that you, 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 because you can't be double-minded. Either you are or you aren't. If you are a resident of uh, New York, then you keep things the way they are. If you aren't, then you have to start uh, releasing the star. You got a, uh, you got the homestead exemption in Florida. You got a Florida driver's license. You got a floor. You're voting in Florida. And you prove that you have a closer re- relationship to Florida than New York. Okay, so they would go for any state, not just Florida, That's right. right? Yeah, well, more more than anything, New York doesn't let you go easily if they can. If they think it's iffy, you you can't believe how tough it can get. Okay, and if I, if and if I just didn't file a New York State return, they well, then you can just wait effort. on a bill. And you'll get a nice bill from New York State with a lot of penalty and interest. They're very good at penalty and interest. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome, Gary. Thanks day. for calling. Thank I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Text us at 716-8030930. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with all of your calls after the break.
Hey to us, you are family. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. We're here on WBEN, and we want to make sure you don't overpay. And I got Chris Fabian in studio with me. We're going to go back to the phones. We're going to talk to Tony from Batavia. Hi, Tony. How can we help you? Hi, Esther. Yeah, I, I've got a question regarding uh, Roth IRA distribution. Sure. Uh, the last three years, I've been rolling money out of a regular IRA, putting it in a Roth IRA. And uh, I've, I've got a couple hundred thousand, let's say. Okay. And, and the thing is, I started the Roth maybe about 10 years ago. What part of this am I not understanding? Is if I had the, if I started the Roth 10 years ago, does that mean that at the five year rule is null and void or how it, old are you? Uh, 73. Okay. So Chris, give them the good news. Well, as long as it's been in there, you started the account over five years ago and you're over 59 and a half, which you are, the money is tax free that you pull out. Okay. Even, even the money I put in, let's say two years ago. Correct. Oh, great. That's what I thought. That That's what I thought. Okay. Well, that's great news. You, you really made my day. I appreciate it. Well, good. It. We love to make people's day. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks for calling, right. Tony. Here's the thing about Roths. What Tony did when he rolled over from his traditional to a Roth, he already paid the taxes on it. Yep. See, what people don't understand is, yeah, he's taking it out tax-free because he already paid the taxes on it. <laughs> so, you know, you can dance and sing all you want about a Roth, but you already, when you're doing a conversion, you pay the taxes up front. You're alive now, you're paying the taxes now. So, so it's true, it's tax-free later, but you've already paid the taxes. So you really have to put a pencil to it and make sure that you understand exactly what kind of benefit you're really getting because many people aren't getting a benefit at all. Correct. Right? Yep. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to Kevin. Hi, Kev. Hello, Kevin from Jamestown. Hello. I hear Hello. Some, there he is. All right, you got to wake up there, Kevin. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. I was at the park with my dog. Um, Esther, <laughs> I sold my house a couple of years ago. I went to an apartment. Uh, last year, I'm not driving a lot now. I went to your dunker for your only office and met with a nice lady. Yep. So the thing is, I had to move again because the guy, my landlord's daughter, was sick with cancer. So now I live in Celeron, but I just haven't seen the stuff again. Like I have two uh, insurance policies. I haven't seen the uh, things on them. Uh, I just think I got my Social Security disability, and I got a couple banks today, but I'm missing three or four. I, I need the financial guy saying I don't have that. I called them, so I'm ready to Wait, go. Let me ask you a question, place. Kevin. Do you you don't own a home anymore, yeah. right? What, dear? You you do not own a home anymore, yes, correct? Hello. Do you own a home anymore? I'm re I'm retired. Okay. Do you own a house? Do you own a home? No, I sold it two years ago. All right, that's what I thought. So all you have is your social right security. You have your social security and what other source of income? Uh, social security disability. I get uh, and I get also a pension. How much is your pension? But I want to. I want to go to the same lady in Dunkirk for Donia. Okay, Price. but how name, much so. is your They're pension? Probably Liz. Okay, how, go ahead. How Esther. much is your pension? Uh, Social Security disability, I get like 2000 No, how much is your pension? pension? Not Social Security. 500, how much? 500, 500 a month. Are they withholding any taxes on it? I'm sure they have to. No, they don't have to. Oh, um, so should I just call Dunker? Okay, but wait a minute. I, I want to help you out here. If they're not withholding any taxes, it sounds like you don't have to file. Break it up, Esther. I said if you, you don't have any withholding, 
you don't have to file. That's what it sounds like to me. So you can call us at, at our corporate headquarters and we'll put you into, con into contact with the person that prepared your return last year and you can talk to her, but it sounds like you Very don't have to file. Very good. Yeah, ask All right. for Liz. Thank you for calling. Yeah, ask for Liz Curtis. Liz there. Usually, usually it was Tiffany, but I don't yeah. drive a lot now, so yeah. Liz. All right, <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks. All right, thank you. Thanks for calling. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. We're going to go to Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, how are you doing today? Good. Uh, the reason I'm calling is about the real property tax. Sure, um, the, I, the IT-229? Yeah, you say the IT-229, but uh, I got the form IT-214. That's what they Now you got that. the wrong form. That's the old one. That's the old form, which gives you like teeny weeny bit of benefit. The IT-229 is if you are a property owner, uh, you're paying property taxes, and your property taxes exceed 6% of your adjusted gross income. All right, so you've got to file, you do not have to file the 214. You can just no. disregard it. 229. I, go to the 229. Now, I have another question in the same field. Uh, in 2001, I filed the, uh, the uh, 214, and I got back $95. Well, and you need the, to go back and fix it because you still have 21, 22, and 23 open, and you can get the rest of the, you can get your extra money. 22 was, cor was filed correctly. I got over $300. Yeah, okay. So um, go back and fix 21. Now, do I do that with an amended tax return? Yes, IT 201X. The 201X, mm -hmm. and then uh, do I have to do the do I have to do the 299 with that also? Yes, you do. So I got to get then two, this two of the same 229s, right? Right. In 2001, it was the 229. 2021, also, right? yes. yes. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for your help. You're very welcome. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your question. Okay. I mean, and you know, for those of you that are listening and you are a homeowner and you aren't filing taxes, look at the IT229. You, many of you, if not lots of you, could get a refund of 250 to 350 for each of the years. But even though you don't have to file, you want to file because they're giving you money back. Yeah, they won't tell you. You have to tell them. They don't, co they don't write you love letters. So, oh, I think you should get some money back. All right. All right. Let's go to Mark. Hi, Mark. How can we help you? Yeah. Hi. How you doing? Uh, Good. Social, Social Security. Both my wife and I are going to retire January of next year, and I understand there's income limits that impact Social Security. Uh, is that income just wage income? Because I have a small pension. There's going to be... Uh, well, it has a lot to do with your age. How old are you? We're both 66. We're both planning to work through... So through you're both of... Of you've already uh, met the re the regular the full retirement, retirement your age. full retirement age, correct? Correct. Well, uh, right. sixty six and a half, uh, which I will be both my we're both the same age, so we'll both. Be All right. So basically, you're on your way to that, right? Correct. Correct. All right. So once you attain full retirement age, it makes no difference how much you make in wages because you will not have to pay back your Social Security. Prior to that. If you make more than like $21,000 in wages, then you have to pay back $1 for every $3 you're over the threshold. But once you reach full retirement age, you're good to go. So it doesn't matter how much. So if I went back to make work, a million, a time you're job, good to go. it doesn't matter. And so you're that kind of answers the next question. That, uh, But with that threshold, though, was that only wage income or does it include? Only uh, wage in or income. Okay. All right. Second uh, question then, starting with that, I'm going to have my 401K which I'm going to start with drawing from to supplement the Social Security. How is a, and it's not a Roth 401k, is that taxed as ordinary income every dollar? Yes. yes. Okay. So Just like wages. So, yeah. So even though the growth, a lot of it is investment growth with capital gains and dividends. Correct. Factor in, it's correct. all ordinary income. That's correct. Okay. And then um, final question then, back to the Social Security, is that taxable at both the state and the federal level? Um, or it's not taxable at all, just basic Social Security. Oh, 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 Social Security may be taxable 
up to 85% on your federal. It is not taxable on New York State. Your pension, if it's a non-federal, state, or local pension, is going to be the first $20,000 once you reach the age of 59 and a half is going to be tax-free. If it's a federal, state, or local pension, the full, the full amount is tax-free on New York State. Right, right, right. No, no, no. The Social Security income itself, just the Social Security that we tax get. Free on, tax-free on New York State. And, and how is it? How do they calculate the tax on the federal level? Though? Well, Chris, you want to do that? Sure. So you yeah. add up all your other income plus okay. half your Social Security, and you said you're married, right? Correct. So if that figure is over thirty-two thousand, then your Social Security starts to become taxable, okay. and it get, can go all the way up to eighty-five percent of your Social Security can count up as income, depending on how much income you have. Other income. Yep. The 401k that I talked about. That counts. Your wages count. Bank interest, dividends, sale right. of stock, everything. Even municipal bond interest counts. Yep. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy. All right. Yeah, well, I have a couple of those. Yeah. All right. That'll clear it up. Thank you. All right. Good. Thanks for calling. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. You can text us at 716 716- 8030930, and I know we have a lot of callers. We're going to have to break here in a minute for the news. By the way, if during the week you have a question and you don't want to wait for Saturday, you can go to our website at egtax.com, ask the tax lady, put it in, and I answer it myself. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night, but I try to do my very best to answer all your all your questions. But if you also get stuck, you can call our corporate headquarters at 632-7886 and ask to talk to a tax specialist, and we'll make sure we answer your questions in person, which really makes it a lot better than than uh, texting, because sometimes texting, you got to write a novel to get the, the answer in. So uh, we're going to take a short break right now. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady. We're going to take a short break for the news. We'll talk to you after the break. Hey, to us, you are family. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, joined in studio with Chris Fabian, and we want to help you. So if you have any tax questions, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. And we've had Tom waiting a long time. So, Mr. Tom, how can we help you? Yeah, I uh, got a pension, and it was... Uh, turned into a group annuity. Is that taxable? It should be if it was a if it was a pension that was funded with pre tax dollars, yes it should be taxable. That's okay. what it sounds like. Uh -huh. But I mean did they take everybody's money and put it into a group into an annuity? Oh, oh, okay, I retired from Westinghouse years ago and in that time, it changed. The pension plan changed hands three times, and it ended up now with Prudential, and it's listed as a group annuity payment. Do you have a 1099 um, R form? Mm, Did you take a yeah. withdrawal from it? Yeah, I got. Uh, I got. Do you a have the 1099 form. R form in front of you? No, no, no. I just want to know if annuity. I heard some annuities are not taxable. Some of them aren't if they if they're funded with after tax dollars. So oh. who, what you really need to do is when you get the 1099R, you're going to find in box one there's going to be a gross distribution, and then in box two it might be completely blank because they don't know, and so oh. you'd have to call your employer and find out is there any after tax dollars that funded that annuity. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. No, the reason I'm calling about this is because um, it looks like this year i got to pay tax on some of my Social Security. I figured everything out with half Social Security, and I'm like $470 over that $2,500 or, yeah, $2,500. $25,000. Yeah. I'm single. Okay, but look at that's $47 in taxes. Really? Yeah, that's all it is. But you're in the 10% tax bracket. So if you're over by $476, you're going to pay $47 in taxes. Oh, okay. But here's the thing. Did you work? Now? 
no, yeah. no, no. no I'm working. I'm just on uh, uh, Social Security. Social Security, the pension, and I'm getting. Uh, uh, I gotta take. Uh, I got an IRA uh, pension retirement fund too that I gotta draw every year. Mandatory. All right. So you have an RMD. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So how much is your income approximately? Uh, all together, if you count all the Social Security. Well, not all the so. No, not the not counting the Social Security. Well, it came to twenty five thousand. Okay, so you might be in the twelve percent bracket. So you might be in the twelve percent bracket. So you might pay forty nine or fifty dollars in taxes oh, on that social, all? but it's not much money. Oh, okay, that's what I well, was wondering. Okay. Hey, hey, Tom. Yeah. Are you, do you give money to charities? Yeah, not too much though. Okay. Well, because you could always, with your RMD, take that money and donate it directly to the charities. This way it doesn't count as taxable income on your tax return, which would lower the taxability of the Social Security. If it's uh -huh. in an IRA. If it, yeah. Yeah. From the IRA, right. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm going to make an appointment. That I, but it's I, really, it's like so small, you should not worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to still, I'm going to come into your, one of your offices and have Well, a, we'll take really good care of you, and thank yeah. you for calling. Yeah, and, thank you. And waiting so long, we appreciate your call. No, that's okay. No, I'm glad. I, I didn't, I was worried how much I'm going to have to pay in taxes, you know. If right. It's only well, like $47, you know, I ain't worried yeah, about it. Yep. Well, on, on the Social Security piece, you were mentioning about the Social Security. Right, right. So that would be, you're 12% at the, at, the, at the big part, so, mm -hmm. so it's like $50. Okay? Okay, thank you. Hey, thanks, Tom. I appreciate your call. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 830930, star 930 on a cell phone. You can text us at 716-8030930. We got a text, right, Chris? Right, right. They texted in that, that they missed our radio show and they want to hear it, but they can't find it on our website. They only found your interview with Susan Rhodes, Rose. Um, but on our website, you would have to go to general information all the way on the bottom, and you'll see a thing that says radio show archives. And right there, you will find like the last 40 radio shows. So it's a right. You can, it's like a tax school. You almost, you almost can <laughs> learn taxes. Anyway, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady. What I want to talk about today, and 8030930930930, star 930 cell phone, I wanted to talk about reading your brokerage statement. And the reason that I think it's important is, first of all, people that rushed in before their broker sent the statements, now we're going to be filing amended returns, and this is what brought it to the forefront. I have several clients that we've done the return. I asked them if there was a broker statement. They said no, but lo and behold, the broker statement came in, and I thought it was important that we talk about this because if you ignore it, what will happen, Chris? Well, you'll get a letter um, probably a year and a half from now saying you didn't claim all your income, and... They're gonna. You owe this much money plus interest plus penalties. But here's the thing, most people won't owe it, because a lot of it is, especially if it's sale of stock. There's a cost basis in there, and if when you apply the cost basis against what you sold it for, the gain is nowhere near what the IRS thinks it is, because when they send you that nasty gram, they just basically whatever. Uh, tax breaks you can get, even though they know that there's a cost basis, they will not apply it and they will go after you for the full amount of, of money. So it's very important if you have already filed your return and you got a brokerage statement this week or the week before or, or next week, um, you gotta you have to amend your tax return and put it on because you will be very unhappy a year and a half from now. Correct. Correct. So, okay, so I wanted, again, uh, to talk about this. If So if you're in the market, don't file without, and in the market means that you're in stocks and bonds, don't file your tax return till you get your brokerage statement. Okay, if you have IRAs and 401ks, is that something we need to know, Chris, <laughs> if you haven't done the withdrawal? Yeah, I mean... Because I mean, you, let's say you got 401ks and you haven't taken any money out. Do you have to worry about that? Well, if you're 73, yeah. 
No, I'm talking about somebody that has that that isn't doing an RMD, that is under the age of 73. If you have IRAs and 401ks, and they say, "Here's my statement for that," is that important? Oh, no, no, that's not important. Right, because until you start withdrawing, uh, and they're going to issue a 1099R form for that, you don't need to, to keep adva to, to keep track of that because that's all tax deferred until you start to withdraw. And it, well, like Chris says, at 73, you have to withdraw. Right, right. And you're talking about Form 5498. Right which people usually get in May, and it drives us crazy because then right. they call and say, oh, my God, I just got this tax form here, 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 and it, it's just an information All over. right, and another thing that people don't, don't seem to understand, that the health insurance provision that said you have to prove how much health insurance that you have is no longer in effect, right? I mean, right. you don't have to show that you have health insurance. Uh, your your W two if you're working shows that the health insurance is there, but you don't need to provide that when you're filing your return. That's another thing I wanted to clear up. Your now your brokerage statement can 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 contain interest that they paid you, dividends, qualifying dividends, capital gains distributions, tax free income, foreign taxes paid, nine ninety a income and sales of stock. You have to have different parts of the tax return uh, of the 1040 form to comply with whatever information they gave you. For instance, interest goes on, what Chris? A uh, Schedule B. And dividends? Schedule B. But what if there's qualifying? Well, then the qualifying goes to the Schedule D worksheet. Right. And um, if you had capital gains, what happens with that? Um, then the capital gains go there as well. And the benefit of that is you get a reduced tax rate. And how about if you have uh, foreign taxes paid? Then there's the 1116, which is the foreign tax credit. And that's a dollar for dollar credit. Correct. Right? So if you paid 300, you get back 300. If you miss it, you overpaid your taxes by 300. Yep. Right? How about a 199A? Uh, distribution. Well, that is counts as QBI income, which means 20% of that is you would be able to claim as a subtraction from income before you go to the tax tables. And then when you look at that in the behind all those sheets is the sale of stock. And the sale of stock, if, if they did sell stock, you have to report as long or short, you have to divvy up whether it's it's been the the basis has been provided by the broker or not and so there that has to be done as well so all of these things need to be done with your brokerage statement right right and they have until february 15th to get them out to you but they can have permission they file for an extension to have that delayed to like march 15th so you need to call your broker and say, hey, where is my stuff? When is it getting mailed if you don't have it? Because like you said in the beginning, if you ignore it, the IRS won't, and they'll send you a bill later. Now, let's say that you have your brokerage statement, and they don't know what the cost basis is. So let's say you sold $25,000 worth of stock, and the cost basis is blank. Is that what you should do, just ignore it? <laughs> well, if you want to pay tax on all that sale, sure. But otherwise, go back through your records and come up with that cost basis. Because you could be selling it for twenty five, dollars and you paid forty dollars for it. Yep. And you have a $15,000 gain. But if you leave that cost basis blank because you just don't want to futz with it, you end up paying taxes of maybe uh, on $40,000, $8,000 in taxes. Well, actually, with the state of New York, more like $10,000 in taxes. And all you have to do is, is be able to prove the cost basis. You know, I'll say to a client, gee, this has no cost basis here. D did somebody give it to you? No, we paid for it, but we changed brokers and da 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 da. And that's where you really got to do a little digging. And that's very important because if you don't do that, you overpay your taxes. Right. Right? Yep. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady, 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. Text us at 716 8030930. We have some texts. We right? do. We do. Uh, first one is, how can you get a copy of last year's tax returns, state and federal, for free? 
I cannot find mine, and I was told that you really need them to do this year's tax return. I did not have it done at any tax office last year, so there's no place that would have copies of it locally. Someone said you had to pay the feds 47 for your copy of your return. Isn't it online somewhere for free? Well, well Chris? Well, you can get a transcript <clears throat> of your return from the IRS. They'll only give you the federal version. And that you can get for free. We can assist you with that. You can go online, create an online account, and try to download it yourself. New York State, though, if you want a copy of your New York, you do have to pay them. But depending on what's on your return, you really don't need it. You may need your AGI or something if you're trying to e-file it yourself. That's the only time for that. But if you have depreciation, uh, long-term loss carry forward, something like that, then it's really important to have that. Right. Correct. But the, the transcript ought to do you absolutely fine. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. And what's our other one? Um, I am a new trustee of a tangible property household trust, house, car, and furnishings, and a financial securities trust. I am a beneficiary of household and household and myself son 51 and twin boys 14 and multi charities are bennies on financial can you guide me in applying for eins do you do such filings well i mean employer id numbers are very simple i can't believe that somebody has set up all these trusts and didn't get you an employer id number right. but yeah it, it's very simple to get an ein yes yes but isn't that strange that somebody would have done all these trusts yep. and not gotten somebody an EIN? Yep. That is very strange. Yeah. And it just means employer D number. In other words, like we all have social security numbers because we're human beings. But once you vary from that, whether you're a corporation, subchapter S, partnership, uh, maybe an LLC or a trust, then or, or even a fiduciary, if somebody passes away, you get an employer ID number, which basically is another numerical way to keep track of you. Yes. Right? Yep. Correct. Okay. Let's go back to the phones that we got. Polly. Hi, Polly. What a cool name. Thank you. Oh, I would have loved to have been a Polly. <laughs> Polly Gullius Tax Service. Hmm. Polly Gullius. What do you think? <laughs> How <laughs> can we help you, Polly? Yeah, um, just a general question. My son um, has invested some money, and he's young, and he's like, um, we. I didn't realize to warn him. Um, the last few times you did his taxes, that you got to um, wait till you get your statement on, like you get, um, what do you call, tax on. Your dividends and your you, capital gains. Yeah, it sounds crazy, even income tax. But so I'm like, I didn't even know that. So and I'm just wondering if you guys have, of course, the best thing is for him to go to you guys. I told him that. And uh, and, and, and he should be going to the Finn guys for um, investing. But do you, do you have a good one-on-one -on -one reference for he's – he's trying to learn about just the general basics on well, – You know, we uh, have a wonderful tax school, um, okay. and it's every fall. Uh, it's, it's free, and you can actually go online and, uh, you know, download it, and you will learn – tons of stuff about taxes so if he's interested in learning taxes and unless he wants to sit there and go through the irs publications which are also free you know he might want to uh, investigate using our uh tax school which is online and he can watch it going to bed at night and it will certainly put him to sleep i'm sure but uh, <laughs> he will learn everything he ever wanted to know about taxes Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad that it's online. I know I heard about your school. I wanted my daughter to, to join that. It's and, absolutely um, and a it was, phenomenal school. You guys got filled up real fast. Yeah. Um, oh, and if you got time, I always wondered about this corporations are people. What does that even mean? And if, if you have an idea what, what that is. Well, I about. mean, a corporation, what happens is you set up another entity. So a human being is an entity when you set up a corporation it is its own entity just like a person and so all the rules that pretty much an individual would have to uh, att uh, attest to and attain to uh, when they're doing their federal return the corporation 
use because it's there for business also has its own set of rules. So it's like a person, even though it's not a person. It is a separate entity. Okay. And does it seem right? Is it wrong to think it's wrong? Is it just not wrong that the government taxes people's um, savings? Or, you know, they don't savings. they don't tax their savings. They only tax the increase over what was put in. The capital that went into that savings account is not taxed again. Only the interest that that capital makes is taxable. Wow. So if you okay. put in a hundred thousand dollars and you make ten thousand in interest, you don't pay taxes on the hundred thousand. You only pay taxes on the ten thousand. And if it were in the twelve percent tax bracket, you'd pay twelve hundred dollars in taxes. Huh. It still seems wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you yeah. for calling. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you, so dear. Bye bye. <laughs> I I know nobody likes playing tax. I don't. You well, know, I don't like playing well, tax like, either. You know, we talked about earlier today. The government's throwing around not taxing Social, Social Security. Social Security, right? But they got to uh, pass that. Don't, the House it's of not Representatives <laughs> has has submitted a bill. Uh, that would make Social Security tax-free in 2025. So if you're interested in that, contact your um, representative, because this is a house uh, deal, and tell them how you feel. Now, the interesting thing is Social Security is really coming under stress and duress because of all the people on Medicaid that are being put on there who are illegal. So, you know, uh, you should really pay attention. Yep. Yes. Okay, what else we got? We got, Chris? let's go to Leah. Hey, Leah. Hi. I just have a question. Um, so I did my taxes, and I claim my son every year because he lives with me more than half of the year. And his father today is asking me if he can have a Social Security number to claim him on his taxes because he can claim something different. Is that true? You're it, the... all, it all depends, okay? In other words... Who does the child, who's the custodial parent? I am. Okay. So he can't claim head of household. Did you give him the right um, to claim the child? So we were never married. And if I, if we go according to what the rule is, it says that we are, um, like I have him more than 50% of the time. He, he has him All every right, other But you weekend. did not give him the right to claim the child. You no, didn't. I didn't. Yeah. All right. So you could have waived your right to claim the child and given him the option of claiming the child. You'd still be able to be head of household because you said you're single, but you wouldn't be able to claim the child. But if you did not give him that right, he cannot arbitrarily take it. Okay. So he, because he's saying that he can cl- claim the end earned earned income credit he cannot unless well, the that's, child well, lives with him. well that's does he he pays you oh, child you're support you're talking about yeah i know what you're talking about now he pays you child um, support leah he does yes does Through he the pay new it? york state collection yeah okay that's different that is a new york state that is something chris you explain it yeah there's a there's a non-custodial earned income credit through new york state does he make less than like 36000 to be honest, I have no idea, but he does not pay that much child support or it, pay for half of his expenses. That, that doesn't so. matter. This is a non-custodial credit. So if this he, is New York State giving him a kind of a pat on the back for paying his child support through the collection unit of the New York State uh, Child Support Division. So they're giving him the right to get an earned income credit for a child that he's not claiming on his tax return if he's up to date and paying child support. That's strictly New York. Okay. So it doesn't affect your return. Okay, perfect. That's all I really wanted to know. Yes, thank you so much. You're very welcome, Leah. Okay. All right, I'm Esther Goulias, the tax lady from EG Tax. 803. Oh, I guess we're kind of running out of time, right, Chris? Yep, another minute yeah. and a half. <laughs> minute and a half. Okay, so let me finish up again, and I guess we're not going to be able to talk to anybody else here. Um, make sure that you understand that on the federal, you cannot take your brokerage fees as a deduction. However, on New York State, you can. 
So if you are a non uh, a non itemizer on the federal because you just don't have enough on New York State, they are operating under a completely different set of rules. They're using the old rules before Trump became president. And under that stipulation, you're allowed to take your brokerage fees, your tax prep fees, uh, and miscellaneous itemized deductions, auto travel, and other things of that nature. So make sure that you understand that on your brokerage statement, the brokerage fees are on there, and those are also deductible. Wanted to get to that, too. Right, right. And we got a fast text. Do I need, need to pay sales tax on buying a piece of farm equipment from an estate sale? They may do sales taxes included in the price, so they pay the sales tax already. You would have to ask the estate people if that's what they did. Correct. And, and if during the week you need us, you can go to our uh, website at egtax.com. We have all of our offices open 9 to 5, non Monday, Monday, 9 to 9, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 on Saturday. We're, we want to help you. God bless you. Thanks for calling. We'll talk to you next week.